Proper health is grass-based and not grain-based. The conversion of grass into animal products is, of course, the foundation of animal agriculture. Greater utilization of forage-based production systems and improvements in these systems can solve many of the problems we face today and will face in the future. One massive problem our country faces is the epidemic of obesity and chronic diseases. Animal agriculture faces the challenge of the mistaken belief that animal products are the cause of this epidemic. The irony is that science has shown that diets based on animal products provide a solution to these diseases. The topic of this talk is the difference between the official dietary recommendations and what the science has in fact demonstrated regarding the importance of animal products in the human diet. My hope is that this information will help you make informed decisions regarding your own health and diet and that of your family and will help you as you market your products. Since the early 80s, the official policy of the United States government has been that every American over the age of two, including pregnant and lactating women, needs to be on a low-fat, reduced red meat, high-carbohydrate diet to reduce their risk of heart disease, avoid obesity, and related chronic diseases. This policy was the product of faulty reasoning and corrupt science, and this corruption continues to influence the discussion of diet, nutrition, and human health today. It has negatively impacted animal agriculture and produced an epidemic of chronic illness in the United States. These guidelines have been a tragic failure. The good news for progressive animal producers is that a growing number of Americans, potential customers, know it. To demonstrate how ingrained this low-fat is good health message has become, let's contrast some examples of conventional wisdom with what science has actually demonstrated. If I say cholesterol, do you think harmful when you should be thinking essential? The science has shown that dietary cholesterol has no meaningful effect on total cholesterol levels. Total cholesterol is unrelated to risk of coronary heart disease. Science has shown that low-density lipoprotein cholesterol is at best a marginal risk factor for coronary heart disease. Science has shown higher total cholesterol is in fact associated with greater longevity for women and seniors. And science has shown that lower total cholesterol is in fact associated with greater cancer mortality risk. If I say saturated fat, do you think artery clogging? And the science has shown that saturated fat does not cause heart disease. In fact, science has shown that a low-fat diet will increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. And science has shown that high-fat diets produce greater weight loss, better blood glucose control, and reduced cardiovascular disease risk. If I say whole grains, do you think healthy when you should be thinking harmful? When you look at this picture, does the phrase heart attack on a plate come to mind? The science has shown that dietary fat, whether saturated or not, does not cause heart disease. In fact, the science has shown that carbohydrates do because of their effect on the hormone insulin. What is the heart-healthy portion of this meal? We've been told to limit our intake of saturated fat, and the terms saturated fat and animal fat are often treated as if they are synonymous. But animal fat is, in fact, a mixture of different fatty acids. These mixtures differ between animal species, and can be influenced by production practices. In general, beef fat is 50% saturated fatty acids, one-third of which is stearic fatty acid, which our bodies convert to oleic acid, the primary fatty acid in olive oil. 42% are monounsaturated fatty acids, but 90% of these is oleic acid, and 4% are polyunsaturated fatty acids. The science has shown, therefore, that eating beef tallow 
will improve your blood lipid profile and therefore lower your coronary heart disease risk. The science has shown no association between meat consumption and cancer. In fact, science has shown that refined carbohydrates, starches, and sugars are the most likely dietary causes of cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and the other common chronic diseases of modern times. Because the focus of medicine has not been on nutrition, and because of the low-fat diet is the healthy diet dogma, many of our physicians are not well informed about general nutrition. A study published in 2005 asked physicians several general nutrition questions. 93% did not know that a low-fat diet in general would increase blood triglycerides. 75% did not know that a low-fat diet would decrease high-density lipoprotein. 50% thought that a low-fat diet would not change HDL. 50% did not know carbohydrate was the diet component most likely to raise triglycerides. Since an increased level of triglycerides and a reduced level of HDL are indicators of increased coronary heart disease risk, Science has shown that a low-fat diet, which is by definition a high-carbohydrate diet, will increase a person's coronary heart disease risk. This is my own personal moment of clarity, Christmas of 2007. When I looked at myself in this picture, I realized that I had to do something. At my heaviest, I was over 220 pounds. Several friends had been diagnosed with prediabetes and I learned that I had several risk factors for that condition as well. I had tried various methods of losing weight, but without significant or lasting success. By this time, my wife Nancy had already been on her own journey of research and dietary change for more than two years, but she was smart enough to know that talking to me before I was ready to listen probably wouldn't accomplish much. So when I was ready to listen, I had my own in-house expert. She directed me to the books and other sources of information she'd found helpful. By following this information, I've achieved a 45-pound weight loss by adopting a way of eating that emphasizes animal fats and animal proteins while reducing carbohydrates. Much of what I've been learning these past three years actually amounts to a review of material from my nutrition physiology and biochemistry classes at the University of Kentucky in the early 80s. As I've studied, I've come to realize that I had been the victim of a massive disinformation campaign that was waged upon the American people to convince us that a low-fat, reduced cholesterol, high-carbohydrate diet is the healthy diet. One of the laws that Leonardo may have had in mind 